Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your boy Varun Chopra, and today we have Parth Katlana in the house. Uh, he's a great friend of mine. We've been friends since kindergarten, and now he's going for his masters to US. Parth, would you like to tell something about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, currently, I have like uh, almost completed my B Tech, uh, and uh, next month I'll be moving to US. So quite excited for that. Uh, I have done my undergrad in computer science, and uh, I'm going for my master's in computer science as well. Brilliant. So let's start with a very basic question: Why did you decide to go for your master's abroad, and why not from India? So personally, for me, uh, I have always wanted to go uh, explore the Western culture uh, because a lot of my ideologies and lifestyle have been framed by that. Uh, by which I mean the movies, books, uh, music, etc. Uh, and luckily enough, all the important aspects that uh, shape my career, uh, like uh, better education and um, more job opportunities, all fall into that school of thought. So I I think uh, now is a good time to like uh, grow to US and explore that. Superb. And when did you start preparing for your masters? When did this journey start? Uh, I think I started in the. Twenty twenty one June July phase, yeah, and that is when you gave all your exams and all, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I gave my GRE in August, but I started preparing for that in July. Brilliant. And uh, which countries did you apply to, and why? Uh, so I only applied to US, and I researched about Canada, but I applied to only US. Why is that? Why not Canada? Since you researched about it. Well, uh, I think I've always been clear that I wanted to do engineering, and for engineering, I personally believe that US is the most uh, opportune country that you can go to. Yeah, totally. And did you take help from any counselors? Actually, I did take help from counselors, and not one but two. But I, I, I don't think that was required. In hindsight, it was uh, more or less waste of money. Why didn't they guide you well, or did they misguide you? How was your experience? I mean, they did guide me, uh, but the kind of guidance that they provide was very little. And uh, uh, of course, again, in the hindsight, uh, I believe I could have done that myself only. So I guess having a good friend that has gone through this process, uh, you can just talk to him, and you would get all the guidance that you would need. So I really wouldn't recommend a counselor. So, in a nutshell, in your opinion, you shouldn't go for a counselor. You should rather speak to someone who has already gone through the process and do your own research. That that's more conducive. Definitely, definitely, a hundred percent. Superb. And coming to exams, like you told me that you gave your GRE last year in June, July. So, what other exams did you give, and what were your score, and what was your GRE score as well? Okay. Uh, so, I gave GRE and IELTS. Uh, I gave my GRE in August. Uh, my score was 320 uh, with a split of 166 quant and uh, 154 verbal. Uh, and then in my IELTS, I got eight overall. Wow, yeah, I got IELTS in October. Yeah, that that's amazing. And about IELTS, would you recommend CPT or would you recommend pen paper based IELTS? I would definitely recommend CPT because. The complete process for me was uh, very easy, uh, and uh, I believe uh, be, uh, being computer based that helped in being uh, more smooth the whole process. But uh, if anybody is more comfortable with paper, sure, go on to that. It's not really problematic or anything. Okay, and uh, how did you shortlist universities? Uh, the process for uh, shortlisting my university was not really very clear. Uh, but what I did was like uh, I researched different factors like uh, ranking, of course. Then uh, the placements that the university was offering. I talked to some seniors by connecting on LinkedIn, and then overall formed an intuitive uh, approach to selecting universities. Uh, so it was more like a holistic approach and not really a procedure based. Okay, so. How long did it take for shortlisting universities? About two weeks, I would say. And that's sufficient. What you deem that sufficient? Ah, uh, I'm. I mean, I find the universities that I picked to be quite fruitful because, ah, uh, I think 
I the rejection admissions that I got were like fair, so I think that would be sufficient. Brilliant. So coming to rejection admissions, which universities did you apply to, and what were their decisions? Yeah. So basically, I applied to eight universities, them being University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, then Yuma Amherst, then Northwestern University, Northeastern University. uh north carolina state university university of florida and arizona state university so i applied to eight universities and i got uh, acceptance from four and rejects from four so the ones that i got acceptance from were uh north carolina state university northeastern uh, then we have university of florida and uh, lastly arizona state university in all these universities you applied for mscs if i'm not wrong uh yeah uh, if some university had a data science track i think two of them had that so i uh, went for that but uh, mostly it was uh, computer science okay and which one did you finally choose and why so finally i selected uh, north carolina state university that's because uh, it had a fairly decent ranking in computer science uh if i'm not wrong it was 41 uh at that time when i was selecting uh and plus uh, i had already had a conversation with uh, a couple of professors there and their response was very positive they were very welcoming so i felt like uh, it was a good approach for me and also north carolina is absolutely beautiful the weather is amazing so all in all i thought it was the best decision for and you were mentioning that it's ranked 41st is it in us or is it globally for your course uh i think it is in us so okay. computer yeah and uh, uh have you applied for visa well you know i think you almost leaving next month so you must have have you gotten your visa yeah uh, i applied for my visa and actually i recently got my visa slot about two days ago but the process was really i think uh trouble some for me why is that the first of all i like uh, accepted my university's uh, offer in the early april first week so from that point on towards may and i was every day looking for this visa slots and uh, i think till 16th of may there were literally no slots uh, and then suddenly a lot of slots came along so when those slots came uh like everybody rushed in to uh, get those slots and the site only crashed and uh unfortunately for me i tried to book the slot so many times that my account only got froze so for 3 4 days i was just sitting blindly while everybody else was getting the slot and uh, up until now i think 26th may i got my slot so that whole waiting period was really trouble troubles okay uh although your course speaks for itself but i still have to ask for the sake of the audience that what are the career aspects in your field in us okay uh so just to be clear uh, i'm going for computer science uh, but my like um core courses are going to be data science and machine learning so i i guess i should speak about that only and uh, the career aspects are just uh, enormous for machine learning and data science both of these fields are uh, much uh involved in the research and the application is less yet there are a lot of jobs in applications also so further uh in the time i think um there would be more application based jobs and still the research will keep on going so the scope seems to be like a lot super and do you plan to come back or do you plan to settle in the usa uh actually i definitely plan to come back uh but the thing is everybody is saying like um the life there is very good and all that things uh but i think uh for me i want to establish a business in india only so the plan is like 5 6 years of uh experience there and then coming back to india but i don't know again yeah that that's a tentative plan yeah so uh, how excited are you since you're just one month away from flying how excited are you at the I, I mean, I couldn't be more excited, but at the same time, I'm, I'm nervous also, uh, and it's much more significant for me because this is the first time I'm leaving my uh, hometown. 
so even being independent and living alone that's a first for me so i'm quite excited but now is also hard to see yeah so it's it's mixed feelings yeah next and about food and other expenses what do you deem of the living expenses in us have you have you calculated them have you estimated the living cost yeah i i have uh calculated i do have a rough standing of uh, what the expenses are going to be but i'm still not sure because uh i mean doing a part time and internships are naturally going to cut off a lot of that but but if i want to state that outright right now i think that would be somewhere around uh my tuition fee equal to tuition fee only which is about 40 lakhs so for two years that is so 80 lakhs would be the total expense that you were considering for your course and living expense right yeah for a couple of years and how's the weather in north carolina like like you spoke it's pretty good so could you describe a bit uh i mean it's just amazing most of the year it's quite pleasant uh it goes below uh 0 degrees once or twice uh and on the uh, other radar also uh it is heated to about 28 to 30 degrees just in uh, about like a month or two so yeah the rest of the year it's pretty good and you must have connected with alumni and you know professors like you mentioned that so how was your thing how would you advise our viewers to connect to their alumni or to their professors what would be the mode of communication okay uh, so i think there are two parts to that question alumni and professors yeah. alumni are generally easier to connect to because uh, like if you have a like connecting uh, aspect for example uh, the same university so you could directly uh, send a request on linkedin by explaining them that i am a upcoming student at this is this so they would definitely uh, relate to your standing where, where you are right now so generally people are uh, like happy to help or guide you uh, through anything that you want professors on the other hand are a bit hard to connect to because the only way possible is through i think uh, mailing them directly by uh, taking their email address from the website of the university because on linkedin they generally don't respond i guess because they have so many messages pending already but yeah uh, if you write a good email to the professors explaining uh, your interest and uh, your position coming into the university i i believe they would respond but you should not count on it okay and according to your research one good thing and one bad thing about your university okay so one good thing about my university would be uh, i i i don't know this could be very coincidental but uh, i've seen many universities and their placement uh, and talk to many alumni but the alumni that i from my university that i have talked to coincidentally are from google and app only so i've talked to like eight of them now and four were from apple and four were from google i don't know why that is uh, i talked to some other alumni and generally they don't really have that many alumni from apple so maybe uh, that was a chain of like uh, interviews that my alumni were getting uh, so i believe the placements are really good in my university one bad thing would be uh, I was really interested in doing this artificial intelligence course but a lot of my seniors uh, said that the professor isn't really supportive they do not really grade well and if you take that course uh, you might as well spoil your whole uh, collective gpa so i ended up take, not taking that although i really wanted to explore that course so yeah that's a bad thing that so like you were telling me about the course do you have to choose your courses now itself before you go there or is it flexible you could change it when you go there uh i have to choose uh, as of now some courses going in there uh, but there is some flexibility like you can change after the first semester or if like there's a really um peculiar situation where you uh, are not comfortable in one of the courses you can change that going there also but initially you do have to maintain a record of what course are you going to take up and how many credits are there uh, you know the compulsory credits uh, so there are 31 credits uh, nine for the core courses and rest of them for the elective 
brilliant and uh, any tips that you want to give to the viewers any tips uh yeah i would say just uh i had a really bad visa experience so whenever any of you are going to apply for the us visa slot at least uh just remember the US, us visa slot every year open mid may and then uh, never try to like over book your slot because the account will freeze up and then the process becomes very problematic so just keep calm uh, during that whole visa process okay brilliant so viewers please keep this in mind and also link paths linkedin and instagram handles so if you have any queries if you have any qualms you could reach out path and yeah yeah, yeah. And coming to the last question how was your experience on my youtube channel Uh, it was really great it's always nice chatting to you and since uh, we have already discussed a lot on this topic yeah. uh, i guess it was like a regular conversation you know so yeah and at the same time if anybody could gain some uh, insights through this whole process uh, that would be amazing Yes, brilliant. brilliant. Thanks for helping the viewers out, Parth. And I think that's all from my side. This is VC along with Parth signing off.